Alpha. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine, the kingdom, For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, power, and the, glory, and the glory, forever. forever. Praise, the Lord, Praise the Lord, for he is good, for, he is good. for his mercy endures forever. For forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. The Holy One of Israel, the wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Our scripture comes from Psalms 143, verses 1 through 5. Hear my prayer, Lord. Give ear to my supplication. In thy faithfulness, answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I've read for you Psalms 143 verses 1 through 5. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
nations got a near and far. We do have a land that is called ours. He would gather us, it must be fulfilled, and bring us back to the land of Israel. Kid off our land, cast far from our borders, but say all his laws didn't do what he told us. Is it not written in Psalms 83? They cut us off from being a nation, took away our memory. But it shall come to pass when these things shall come upon thee. The blessings and the curse that the Lord shall set upon thee. We bring it to mind to keep the law with all our soul. He'll bring us back to Israel. He's going to take us home. Praise the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and grace and peace to everybody here in Jesus' name. Also, peace to those on the phone line and also those on the internet. Grace and peace in Jesus' name to you all. All right, we're going to get started with tonight's lesson. And as you can see, the, les the title of the lesson for tonight is called Born Again. Born Again. And I remember what made me write this lesson or put this lesson together 
is because I was coming off the airport um, going to LA and a, you know, a little guy gave me this little pamphlet and it says, uh, ask me a question, are you born again? And I was reading through the pamphlet and of course it had a whole bunch of doctrine, very few scripture. But mainly it says once I accepted Jesus as my personal savior, from that point forward, I was then born again. But, and, and, it goes, and it got me thinking about a lot of doctrine or a lot of dogma that Christianity have is all, all of it's based off one or two verses. And they don't get even deep into the scripture. They take something, quote, uh, you know, a small quote out of scripture and then make a big doctrine out of it, make a big belief out of it. And when the Bible's talking about something totally different. So we're going to take a look at that today and find out exactly what born again really is. And when will we be born again? And what's the proper steps to becoming born again? Because it's not that you can just quote a saying or just accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and that's it. It's a lot more than that. Because we know at first you got to be born of the Spirit. And uh, first you got to be born of the water. And then you got to be born of the Spirit. But it's not as easy as just accepting Jesus as your Savior, as your Lord and Savior, as your Christ, as the one who came and died for your past sins. and so much more than that. That's just the beginning. Matter of fact, that's what you need to even get started on this road to be born again. And we're going to find that out. So let's open up the Bibles and go to St. John chapter 3. St. John chapter 3, and here we're going to read about when Nicodemus came to Jesus and Jesus told him about being born again. St. John chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 1. Brother, when you get there, go ahead. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, uh -huh. a ruler of the Jews. Uh -huh. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him. Now, notice, it said there was a man named Nicodemus, and he was a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews. And we know that the Pharisees was the big religious um, leaders at that time. So he came to Jesus and notice he came to Jesus by night. Why? Because the Pharisees hated Jesus. The Pharisees were the one who actually put Jesus to death. So he came to Jesus by night because anybody who came to Jesus publicly got put out to the synagogues. They were persecuted by, the, uh, by the, this religious group because they wanted Jesus dead. They didn't want nobody to accept them. So here Nicodemus, a Pharisee, because he knew what Jesus was about, came to him by night. And what did he say? Go ahead. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. So this is a Pharisee who has some sense. He actually humbled himself and understood what the scripture said, how Jesus fulfilled the things that was written of him. And he said point blank, we know that thou art a teacher from God. Go ahead. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Uh huh. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. All right, now Jesus said a lot right here. He said point blank, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. And we know what kingdom we're talking about. Well, that's what the gospel is, because Jesus came preaching the gospel that our kingdom come. And that's talking about the kingdom coming down on this earth. Contrary to proper belief, people think the kingdom is already here because they take some words of Paul, some words of Jesus, and twist them. But here, since we understand what kingdom he's talking about, Jesus said point blank, truly, truly, a very, very, I said to you, except you be born again, you cannot even see the kingdom of God. Verse 4. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now he asked a good question. Because he understood what born means. Born means born. Not everything in the scripture is always spiritual. And that's a problem with Christianity. They make some things that are physical spiritual and some things that are spiritual physical. They got everything all twisted around with this modern day doctrine. But here Nicodemus asked a great question. He said, how can a man be born again? Shall he enter into the mother's womb and be born once again? Because he knew born means born. You get a, a whole new body. Everything's new. Something's brought forth. So he knew that. And what did Jesus say? Verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. All right, so Jesus said, it, told us the steps that must take place in order to be born again in order to enter into the kingdom of God. He said, very, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born of water 
and of the spirit. So first you have to be born of the water, then you have to be born of the spirit. Then you can enter into the kingdom of God. So now we need to go to the scriptures and have the scripture explain to us exactly what it means to be born of the water and of the spirit. Because you ask the average Christian, once they say, um, you born of the water, they say, well, that means the baptism, which that's not true. Actually, the water that you must be born of leads you to get baptized. So we need to find out exactly what does the Bible mean to be born again. So let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. So first they say we need to be born of the water. So let's find out exactly what this water is and why we must be born of that water. Let's go to my Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. And we're going to read verse 9 and 10. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 and 10. Why do we need to be born again of this water? What is it about us that need to get all cleaned up by, by this water? And it's the first thing, it, once we get, start walking on this straight and narrow, that you must realize about yourself. Because if you don't realize this, then you won't even be nowhere near that water. That water won't do you any good. No matter how much you absorb that water, you might have that water, you're going to keep it in the glass, it's just going to evaporate. Why? Because you don't realize this about yourself. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, when you get there, go ahead. The heart is deceitful above all things. Now, that's the first thing a person needs to understand about themselves, about their own selves, not nobody else, not the person sitting next to you, not your spouse, not your children, about you, yourself. The first thing you need to do is understand that the heart is what? Deceitful. Deceitful. Now, it's not talking about some people's heart. It's not talking about their heart over there or the people in Sunday worship heart. It said the heart, meaning everybody, whoever has a heart that is still beating blood, guess what their heart is? Deceitful. And I'll take it one step further. It's actually the one that think. As long as you can think, you got to realize that that heart in your head, in your skull, the gray matter, where everything happens about you, is the most deceitful thing on this planet. Satan don't got nothing on your own heart. And that's the first thing we need to understand, because it's, we always point the blame at somebody else. It's so easy to do it, because we do no wrong. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm great. I love myself. I wake up every morning. I don't have a problem with myself. We generally don't. But when stuff hit the fan, do we look at the mirror first? No. We point the blame at everybody else. And even before we admit that, we, say, we might say, well, I did a little thing wrong, but it's not as bad as what they did. Why? Because ourselves ain't nothing wrong. We can always justify. Matter of fact, go to um, Proverbs 28 real quick. I'm going to throw this in there. Proverbs chapter 28. And we're going to read, read verse 26. Because you know how people say, well, the Lord knows my heart. Or, I know this is right because I can feel it in my heart. Look what the Bible say about that. Proverbs 28 and verse 26. Go ahead. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. You see that? This is what the Bible say. He that trusteth in his own heart is a what? Fool. Why are you foolish to trust in your own heart? Because that's the most deceitful thing on this planet is your own heart. Because you, you, you do no wrong. You can always justify anything you do in your own heart. That's, right. That's why it's so deceitful. Because, uh, you know, people say that in a minute. Well, I know I, I, in, my, in my heart, I, I just feel that this is right because I feel, and it just feels, because I feel some more, and then I got to feel again because I just got to feel. <laughs> That's what people say. And that's how they justify stuff. But the Bible is saying, look, he that trusts in his own heart is a what? Fool. A fool. Why? Because the heart is desperately what? Wicked. Wicked. Above what? That's why you foolish to trust in your own heart. So understanding this, it's the reason why Jesus said, look, if you want to see any part of this kingdom, you have to be born of that water first. 
but we still got to find out what that water is. But before we get to the water, let's see what Proverbs has to say here. Flip over to Proverbs chapter 16. You don't have to finish that, bro. Proverbs chapter 16, and we're going to read verse 2. This is why the heart is so desperately wicked. I didn't say it over and over again, but we're going to let the Bible say it. Proverbs chapter 16, we're going to read verse 2 when you get there. Go ahead. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Now you see that? That's why the heart is so wicked. So desperately wicked above all things. Because all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, meaning what I did is perfectly okay. I can justify it. I can sleep at night. Because that's what the heart do. The heart set it up so you can sleep at night. Because you want to get to sleep. You want a guilty, a guilt-free conscience. And guess what? That wicked heart going to give you exactly what you need. And Satan ain't nothing but the, um, the man at the gas pump. Y'all pump it up. Yeah, that's what you need. God, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you good. Yeah, you good. That person deserved to be cussed out. You see what they did to you? I know the Bible say be humble and meek, but even God knows. You know, God gets mad at it too, don't he? Why? That's the heart. That's really wicked. And Satan can't tempt you who was not there. That's why the heart is worse than Satan. Because if you don't steal, he ain't going to put no $20 bill in front of you. For what? That's a waste of time. But if you lie, he sure going to set something up nice and pretty for you to lie. And then once you lie, you start to feel guilty, here come the heart. Well, we had to do it. You didn't want to talk to them no way. I know you said you was going to pay them next payday. I know we had no intention on paying them next payday. But they ain't going to call you no more. Why? Because a heart is desperately wicked of all things. Who can know it? But the Lord knows the heart. And he said, if we want to get into this kingdom to be with him, it's some things that we have to fix. We have to be born again. But in order to be born again, we have to be born in the water first. And then the spirit. But if we keep getting water, which we're going to find out what it is, and let this water evaporate and never use it, guess what? We're going to be born in the spirit. And we're going to see no part of this kingdom. He was real particular about what he said. If he said, if you're not born as water and of the spirit, you shall see no part, even see no part of this kingdom. But in order for us to get on the right path, we need to realize what we're dealing with. It's a reason why the Lord probably make it. You know, when you go to the, uh, some water and you look in it, what do you see when you look in a puddle of water? Yourself. I don't think the Lord, I don't think that's a coincidence with the Lord. Because we got to be born of that water. That water shows us who we really are. The, the, the water reflects what God sees. So we go to that little puddle of water, we see our reflection. Sometimes it might be all blurry. We don't like what we see. We got to fix it. And even a man after God's own heart, you finish that, brother? All the ways of man to clean his own heart, but what? But the Lord wears the spirit. But the Lord wears, yeah, because the Lord deal with the mind. He ain't going to go about what you say, about what you talk, what you speak. He know Israel, we spit game all day long. That's what we do. That's what we do. But we can't feel fool God. So he going to look, he going to look at the real deal. He going to look at you. And even David, a man after God's own heart. Let's see what he even had to pray for. Pro, um, Psalms 51. Are we going to finish there, my ten? Oh, we moving, are we? Oh, you can go ahead and finish that. Uh-huh. Uh, we skipped Jeremiah verse, um, 17 and verse 10. Nehemiah is going to read it real quick. Go ahead. The Lord searched the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. That's one thing we forget about God. We're going to have to pay what we owe. He said he'll give you according to the fruit of your ways and according to the things that you do. Even in the last book, last chapter of the Bible, last few verses, he said, blessed are they that do his commandments, they may have right to the tree of life. And he always, he's a God of his word. And that's why he's telling Nicodemus, hey, look, truly, truly, very, very, for real, dude, for real. Ain't nobody going to enter this kingdom unless they're born in water and of the spirit. You're not going to see no part of this kingdom. But let's go to Psalms 51 and we'll start at verse 7. Psalms 51. 
And we're going to start at verse 7. When you get there, go ahead. Purge me with hyssop, mm -hmm. and I shall be clean. Mm -hmm. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Uh -huh. make, my, make me to hear, the jo hear joy and gladness that, my that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Mm -hmm. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my, trans all my iniquities. And that's what we all should be praying for. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. We got to accept the grace of God. That's what his grace is. His grace is a second chance. And we can't do anything without his grace. That's the foremost thing that we need. And once we understand that, once we do accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he died for our sins that are past, we understand that. Now we need to start hit, getting, um, taking a hit of this water. Verse um, 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, David, the Bible said that he's a man that's a guard own heart, right? But yet, what is he praying for? Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew in me, a, in me a right spirit, a new way of thinking. That's what he's praying for. And that's what we all should be praying for. Because if we don't get a new way of thinking, we can't become God. How are we going to become God with a deceitful heart? That's desperately wicked above all things. Why would God give us the power of Almighty God, but our hearts are so messed up? That's why he said, very, verily, I say unto you, you got to be born in the water and of the spirit. And it's not an easy task. Because even in the, in the beginning of this chapter, he's talking about he was shaping in iniquity. This whole world, we're raising iniquity in this world. Stuff is so messed up that we don't realize what's really messed up. Because it's normal. Stuff to us that's so wicked is normal now. Like if, you, if somebody hits you, what we tell them? Hit them back, right? But the Bible said what? Turn the other cheek. Right? Those are just some, some of the things that we're taught. Even to get ahead in this world, you might have to step on some toes to get ahead. You might have to just jump over some people to get ahead, push people down, always in the front of the class. Be aggressive. Go get it. When the Bible, humble and meek. And I'm not saying it, it's a thin line, and, and sometimes children don't understand the difference. As adults, we understand the difference of how to be assertive and, and still keep a humble and meek attitude. But think about it. A kid don't know the difference. Some adults don't even know the difference. So in the mind of a child, hum, go getting it means I need to be, a, what do I always say, be about that paper, make all that money so I can do this, this, and this, and this. Strive for riches. That's what we're taught. And growing up in that, we don't know the difference. Then you start hitting the Bible, and the Bible's telling you what? Labor not to be rich. Don't worry about money and things like that. But that's our number one priority, isn't it? We go to school for what? For money. That's our main focus. And as a kid, as an adult, it's different because you learn the difference. But as a kid, you don't know the difference. That's what you're supposed to do. And you're learning this for years. That's what got you through college was that check. Now you come to church and you realize it ain't about that? We're grown, we're raised, we're shaped in iniquity. So our mind is so messed up, it's so corrupt, we have no idea what's wicked and what's not no more. That's why we need to pray for a clean heart and to renew a right spirit within us. That's why we need this water that Jesus is talking about, because this water is not baptism. Matter of fact, that water leads us to get baptized. So he said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let's go to um, St. John chapter 4. Let's find out what this water is. And there's so many things that even that our, 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 we pick up on. I don't say our children. We, we picked up on even around our peers growing up. That was just straight bogus.
But now we come to the point when we try, we know that the kingdom is more important, but we got to have a new way of thinking. Now, the thing about it is changing the way you think, changing the way you react to things, changing the way you handle things. That's where the real challenge come in at. Because you can, like I said, you can have all this water in your head and it can just evaporate because you're not applying it, you're not using it. Let's find out what this water is. St. John chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse 6. When you get there, go ahead. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Uh -huh. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me the drink. Uh -huh. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Uh -huh. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest me of drink, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. All right. So the Samaritans, they was put in there when the ten tribes went in captivity. The Assyrians put the Samaritans there in the, in the land. So they've been there for a little while. And just like any people who get put in a different land, start to think you really part of that land. We should know. So this woman being, in, being put in this land by another nation, for whatever reason, she was there. And her forefathers, the centuries passed, and as centuries passed, they started thinking they really was connected. They was a part of this thing. And it was a reason why they didn't deal with them. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, uh -huh. Give me the drink, thou wouldst ask of him, and he would have given thee living water. Now, Jesus about to break down what this water he was speaking to Nicodemus was about. He said, if you knew who was talking to you, you would have asked him of this living water. Now, this living water is not the baptism. But we're going to find out what this living water is. Verse 11. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Mm -hmm. From whence then hast thou that, that living water? Mm-hmm. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Now he said, Art thou greater than our father Jacob? See, she thinks she part of this thing. She thinks she one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Just like we have a lot of us who think they're, we're Gentiles. Think we're descendants of Japheth. Why? Because we need our minds cleansed. We need a clean heart. We need a new way of thinking. And the only way we're going to get that new way of thinking is by this living water Jesus is talking about. Go ahead. Which gave us the well and drank there of himself mm -hmm. and his children and his cattle. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said to her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Uh -huh. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall, ne shall never thirst. Mm -hmm. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, look at this water. What is the water going to do for you? This water going to give you everlasting life, right? And that's the first thing he, um, Jesus told Nicodemus. He said, like, look, if you want to enter into this kingdom, and what is the kingdom? Eternal life. Get into the kingdom with, with the Father, the streets of gold, where you're going to live forever. And if you want to live forever, you have to be born of this water. And what this water going to do for you, you'll never thirst again, and it'll spring up water unto what? Everlasting life. That's what this water is about, getting everlasting life. So if you want everlasting life, you have to be born in this water. But how do you be born in this water? You got to clean it up up here. So he said, whosoever drink of this water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, spring it up into everlasting life. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's see if Jesus gave this water to anybody else. Let's see if anybody else was drinking on this very water that's supposed to lead to everlasting life. Because you ask the average Christian, Jesus started with Mary. Jesus came in the New Testament. When Matthew came, everything changed. Matter of fact, I'll take that back. When Acts came, everything changed. Everything changed. Jesus and the apostles had totally different doctrine. Totally different. Like, the New Testament is a completely different book. I don't even know why God put them together. 
if you ask the average Christian. But let's see. Let's see what, if anybody else drank from what Jesus provided them. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we'll start at verse 1. When you get there, go ahead. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Uh-huh. And, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So baptism didn't start in the New Testament, did it? Mm -hmm. The children of Israel was the first group to get baptized as a whole. Under Moses, through the Red Sea. And what happened when it was in a, uh, with that? Go ahead. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did what? All eat the same spiritual meat and, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. Now look what happened. It said they all ate the same spiritual meat and they all drank the same spiritual drink. Now who was the one who gave them the spiritual drink to drink of? Go ahead. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Now you mean Christ was going around giving other people some water? You mean Christ didn't start giving this water in the New Testament? You mean he was possibly born again already or be born this water already in the Old Testament? Of course, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. His same way for getting to the kingdom in the New Testament is the exact same way he did in the Old Testament. And he gave them also the same spiritual meat and spiritual drink. And I guess what? That spiritual drink was also bringing up unto everlasting life. The same thing he told the woman. He gonna come with anything new. And we shall already know what that water is. Let's go to first, um, Ephesians chapter 5 and let the Bible tell us. How do we cleanse ourselves? How do we drink of this water? Because it's not any holy water that you walk through the church and you sprinkle on your, on your face or anything like that. It's not sending some kind of golden basin off to the side. Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to start at verse 22. We'll start at 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. When you get there, go ahead. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. All right, first off, to be a, the, a Christian or like Christ or to be born in the water takes a lot of humility. And that's something that a lot of people lack. Humility. It says to many yourselves to who? One to another. That's the first thing he said before he goes off and, and starts talking about something else. Before he starts talking about the husband and wife relationship, the first thing he says, submit yourselves to who? One another in the fear of God. Verse 22. Why submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord? That's part of his water. It's a lot of humility. It takes humility to turn the other cheek. It takes humility for Stephen to get busted in the head of the rock and still ask the Lord for forgiveness. It takes humility for Jesus to be dying on the cross, can jump down anytime he got ready, but yet and still go through with the whole thing. It takes humility for that. And we can't submit ourselves for some small stuff around here. That's the water. If we're going to really be Christian, if we're really going to be born again, we really got to be born again, meaning we are different than how we used to be. So it says, why submit yourself to your own husbands as unto the Lord? Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, uh -huh. even as Christ is the head of the church, uh -huh. and he is the savior of the body. Uh -huh. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject unto let, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Everything, but verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Yeah, that's a big thing. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. I mean, Christ died for the church. A slow, agonizing death. Was not an instant. He suffered for his woman. And as you say, that's an example for, uh, you know, for guys. We got to suffer for our wives. If we have a job we absolutely hate, we got to deal with it until we find something better. As long as we're able to do what we're supposed to do. Sometimes we let pride get in the way. We may put ourselves in a messed up predicament. It's a lot of humility it's, and when you start sipping on this water. 
a lot of humility. But that's another lesson. This is where I wanted to get to, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by, by what? the word. See, now we find out what that water is. After all that, we finally found out exactly what that water is. How do you clean, make, create yourself a clean heart? and renew a right spirit, you wash it by the water of the word. It's the word that cleans this decrepit uh, heart. It's the word that cleans this deceitful heart. The word tells you how to react to things, but it's up to you and your heart to actually apply it. It's one thing to be here every Sabbath and know all the stuff you're supposed to do, but when the stuff hit the fans, what do you do? Because that's how you know if you've really been born again. Because there's a lot of us that can say, well, back in the day, I would have did this. Well, why don't we just start saying this? Last year, I would have did this. Because some of us have been in the Word for 12 some years. Sometimes we go way too far back because we're comparing ourselves to where we were when we first walked through these doors. It's time to upgrade. Why don't we start comparing ourselves to how we were last year? Then we'd be a whole lot better. Last when I first got in hell, I would have swung on you. Last year, I would have cussed you out. Now I say, hey, peace in Jesus' name. Let the Lord deal with it. That's how you be born again. We compare ourselves to stuff that way. When we first got in the world, I mean, come on, man. That's, that person should have been dead a long time ago. He should be dust by now. If we really killed the old man, or do we like hanging around and looking at him? Do we like putting him on a, on, as a trophy? Yeah, that's how I used to be. I was cool back then, bruh. <laughs> I was wicked. <laughs> you know what I would have done last when I was there? you like, Jake, that was 10 years ago. What, what was it, 12 years, bro? 13? That was 13 years ago, Jake. <laughs> Put that trophy in the, in the garbage somewhere. But that's how we do. We're supposed to be washed by the water of the word. We don't need to compare ourselves if we've been in this word for some, so many years. Let's go last year. Let's go last month. Let's go yesterday. Because we still keep looking at that old person. We're never going to evolve and get better. Because we're comparing us to how we're supposed to have been changed from. That's why the heart is so deceitful. See how deceitful the heart is? That's really wicked. But Jesus said, if you want to be getting into this kingdom, you got to be born in that water first. And how you be born in that water? You got to wash it by the word. Yes, you don't eat swine no more. Praise the Lord for that. You saved from that. Yes, you understand when the Sabbath day is. You saved from that. But what about wrath and anger and backbiting and all maliciousness, lasciviousness, fornication, all that stuff, which is still in the book. That's what's talking about being born again by of the water first. Because if we don't get that right, ain't no point even talking about what the spirit going to be. There's no point, because we might not even see no part of the Spirit. So let's go a little bit further. So what does it say in verse 26? That he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So you read something in the word, you know you're not supposed to do it, it's been washed clean. Let's go to Romans chapter 7. I'm sorry, go ahead. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that he should, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That last sentence is pretty, is pretty powerful. It said, but that it should be what? Holy, holy and without what? Blemish. Blemish. That's what a bar is supposed to be. We're supposed to be holy and without blemish. We're supposed to clean ourselves up. Constantly clean ourselves up. Constantly evaluating ourselves. Put Leviticus 19 on your refrigerator. So you can walk up to it next to the grocery list. Because you know how bad we need them groceries. Just as bad as we need this water. So let's go a little bit further. Let's go to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, 
And let's start reading at verse 7. Romans chapter 7 and verse 7. When you get there, go ahead. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Mm -hmm. God forbid. Now, the average person would say that the law is sin because they don't have nothing to do with the law. And Paul is saying point blank, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid, but what? Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. So we don't know what sin is, but by the law. That's the water that's showing us what we really look like. Matter of fact, hold your place here. Let's go to James real quick. James, I think it's in chapter 2. Well, it says scripture, bro. It says, "Look into the perfect law of liberty." Verse twelve. Two and twelve. I don't find this one because I have to make a good point. <laughs> James chapter 1. And let's start reading. Yep. And verse 2. James chapter 1, we're going to start at, at verse 22. I'm sorry. James chapter 1 and verse 22. Now, remember what Paul said. Paul said, What shall I say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I have not known sin but by the law. So let's see what James said here. James chapter 1 and verse 22. And we'll go back to uh, in Romans in a second. When you get there, go ahead. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. All right, now, first of all, we got to be doers of the word. Now, that's how you are born again. That's how you're born out of the water. Because you're going to do the water. You're actually going to do the things the water actually says. That's how you clean your mind up. But it says, be ye doers of the word or the water and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. That's just like having a cup and just let the water evaporate. Go ahead. For if, he, for if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Uh -huh. For he beholdeth himself, and goes his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. All right, now it says you look in the mirror, and understand what you see what you look like, or you look at the water, and you see a ref reflection, the water shows you what kind of person you really are in the eyes of God, because your heart thinks something totally different. Your heart thinks something totally different. And just like here, you, you look in the word or you look yourself in the mirror and you see what kind of person you are, but as soon as you walk away from the word or not dealing with the word, what happened? Well, whoso looketh into... I'm sorry, verse 24. But he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So you found out what kind of person you was because you start dealing with the water. But then you stop dealing with the water, you forget what type of person you are. You back to being that old person all over again all over again. The person you're supposed to have put away. You're getting that old dirty mind right all over again, reacting to the ways you, how you supposedly used to react. Why? Because you're not really embracing that water. You're not letting that water wash nothing up because you got to ask yourself, do I really want to change who I am? If you don't, then quit messing around. But if you do, then make the change. 
Because Jesus said point blank, truly, truly, or verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born of the what? Water. And of the what? Spirit. He shall in no wise enter into what? Kingdom of heaven. Exactly. So here he says you got to be a doer of the word or be a doer of the water. That's how you are born in the water because you're doing the water and not hearers, and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his nat natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of person he was. Verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So how are you blessed? Somebody say you're blessed and highly favored. That means you're doing the word, isn't it? So next time somebody say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Oh, really? You keeping the Sabbath day? You not using swine's flesh? What you talking about? I got a BLT right now in my hand. I don't have to worry about that. I'm holy. Get behind me. But this is what the Bible say. Why? Because the heart think one way or the heart has a belief about this. But the book says something totally different. Now let's go back to Romans 7. Romans 7, we'll start back at verse 7. Romans 7 and verse 7. When you get there, go ahead. What shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Is the law sin? God forbid. Uh huh. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. So how do we know what sin is? Because the law tells us what sin is. Go ahead. For I had known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Last I heard, Thou shalt not covet was the commandments, not the law, according to modern day Christianity, right? But according to this, what is the Ten Commandments? The law. Thou shalt not covet is the law. The Ten Commandments is the law. Only people who don't want to do anything, who don't want to be part of this water, will start separating stuff. Well, you know, you got the commandments, but then you got the law. The commandments was in the ark, but the law was over here. I don't care what, what was what. Thou said the Lord do it. So you mean to tell me if your mama said, look, I need you to make sure you get an A in school and put it on the refrigerator, but make sure you be home by 10 and put it on the counter. Well, the one on the refrigerator, you know, the refrigerator is important. That's what food is for nourishment. The counter, you just prepare stuff and you wipe off the counter throwing the garbage. So see how you get philosophical? People, people make beliefs off philo being philosophical about philosophy instead of just dealing with the book say. So here the book says that the law, thou shalt not covet, he didn't know what sin was until he read that. That's how, that's, see, that's what the water can do for you. The water can change you how you think. The water just changed Paul. Paul's mind was messed up. He didn't, he didn't know his mind was filthy, but when he read, thou shalt not covet, he was then cleansed of that. Verse 8. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, Wrought in me all matter of concupiscence, uh -huh. for without the law sin was dead. He said, for without the law sin was dead. Go ahead. For I was alive without the law once. Yeah, he was living it up. We was all alive without the one law once. You know the trophy man that we used to be? That's when we were alive without the law. What we call, like, what, glory days? <laughs> That's when you didn't have the law. You was alive without the law once. But what happened? But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And that's the person we were supposed to kill. The law did it. The water did it. The water drowned that man how we used to be. At least it should have. And I don't start saying that. At least it should have. Only you can answer that question. Because we're supposed to be born again of the water. I Meaning we got to kill that old man. Go ahead. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. So the water that was ordained to life, because remember, we drink of this water, it leads into everlasting life, right? But he found it to be unto death. Why did he find it to be unto death? Because he was not doing these things. He was not living according to how the Bible was. He actually looked in the mirror and did not like what he saw and made a point to change it. Because he was being born of the water. Go ahead. 
For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me and by it slew me. Uh huh. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So he's saying that the law is holy, the commandment holy, just and good. Verse 13. Was then that which was made, uh, made death unto me, God forbid. Uh huh. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is, which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. So he said once he read the law, once he took a look at that water and started drinking of it, his eyes were open and things became exceedingly sinful. Stuff that wasn't so bad when he was growing up is now exceedingly sinful. Think about it, in the high school days, fornication, please. It's like the guys was trying to fornicate. If you want a fornicator, the man fornicator, they called you all types of other stuff. But now when you become adult and you start reading into the law and show how you knew it was wrong, but now become exceedingly sinful. You see how wicked you really were. Why? Because the old you died. You start drinking of that water. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold on the sin. And that's what we need to become, more spiritually minded. If we're going to be born of the water, we will become spiritually minded. Jump down to verse 22. This is how we should be. Go ahead. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. And what's the inward man? It's the heart. The thing that David prayed for, make me a clean heart, O oh God, renew a right spirit within me. That's the inward man. And he said, this is Paul, right? We are in the book of Paul, right, Nehemiah? And what did Paul say? For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. You mean Paul actually preached the law of God? That's right. And that's how we have to be. Meaning the new man is delighting in the law of God. Go ahead, verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, uh -huh. and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. There go that old heart again. The old heart don't want to be replaced. It want to be in control. That's why I was warring against the, the, the inward man, the new heart. Always fighting against it. But it's up to us to have the willpower to put that man down. 24. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And that's why I was saying earlier, in order to really walk this walk, you got to realize what type of person you really are. What type of heart that you really have. 